All right, back with another lesson. This time it's going to be on Purim. See, we're at, we're at another holy day, brothers. All right. It could be the last holy day that we have in this captivity. Well, that's a jet. I don't know if you better see that, but. <laughs> you know, this could be the last holy day we have in this captivity. Hopefully, Lord willing. Anyway, man, just like we did on Nicanor. I'm just gonna get. I'm just gonna read the whole chapter of Esther, of the book of Esther, the ninth chapter. All right. And once again, as it says, and um, what is this? Uh, it's like your judges five and eleven. This is what rehearse the righteous acts. Anyway, let's get. All right, so we're gonna get the whole chapter on what is pure. Well, let's look. This, let's get. Let's get the scriptures to uh, see what it is, man. This is uh, the book of Esther, chapter 9. Now in the twelfth month, that is the month of Adar, on the thirteenth day of the same, when the king's commandment and his decree drew near to be put in execution, in the day that the enemies of the Jews hoped to have power over them, though it was turned to the contrary that the Jews had rule over them that hated them. And that's coming back on earth, man. We're going to have rule over the people. That hated them. The Israelites, man. Alright? But the point is what? Um, and, that, and that says what? It says 12th month, right? That's right. You've been lied to again. <laughs> See, what they call so-called February. In reality, in actuality. February is uh, the 12th month. Alright? March is the beginning of the first month. Alright? But anyway... Reading on. The Jews gathered themselves together in their cities throughout all the provinces, the king of Ahasuerus, to lay hand on such as sought their hurt, and no man could withstand them, for the fear of them fell on all people. Fell upon all people, exactly. No one could stand no one could stand up to us, man. Alright. We was ruling over them. Once again, that's coming back to the earth, man. Verse 3. And all the rulers of the provinces and the and lieutenants and the deputies and officers of the king helped the Jews because they feared, because the fear of Mordecai excuse me, fell upon them. Who was Mordecai? He was a uh he was an Israelite, all right. Who who was who was our uh for lack of a better term, he was like the the captain at this point, you know. I might do a breakdown on that later. But he was he was a high up dignitary of the Israelites, all right? For Mordecai was great in the king's house, and his fame went out throughout all the provinces, for this man Mordecai waxed greater and greater. Thus the Jews smote all their enemies with the stroke of the sword and slaughter and destruction, and did what they what they would unto those that hated them. Once again, going back on earth, man. Alright? People going to get stepped on, man. And that's, on the, that's in the scriptures, too. Stepping is in the scriptures, man. <laughs> I'll, do a, I'll do a video on that, man. But yeah, these other nations are going to be trampled down underfoot, man, which is stepped on. All right? And in Shushan, the palace, the Jews slew and destroyed 500 men. In Parshan, Datha, in Dalphon, in Aspatha, in Paratha, in Adalia, in Aradatha, in Parmashta, in Arasai, in Aridai, in Vajezatha, the ten sons of Haman, the son of, of Havadatha, the enemy of the Jews, slew they, but on the spoil laid they not their hand. All right. Who is the act? Who is who is Haman uh, from Havadatha? He was an Agagite. Agagite. All right. The word Agagite comes from the word Agag. Agag was like a chief, what you would call a chief or a king or a, uh, you know, he was basically a king of Amalek. Amalek is the grandson of Esau, all right, an Amalekite. So, so basically what I'm telling you is uh, Haman was an Edomite, all right, a descendant of Esau, all right, where are we at? On that day, the number of those that were slain in Shushan, the palace, was brought before the king. And the king said unto Esther, the queen, 
The Jews have slain and destroyed 500 men in Shushan, the palace. And the ten sons of Haman, what have they done in the rest of the king's provinces? Now what is thy petition? And it shall be granted thee. Or what is thy request further? And it shall be done. That's right. So after we put in that work on those, on those heathen, man, the, the king is asking Esther, what else you want, man? Right? Then said Esther, if it please the king, let it be granted to the Jews which are in Shushan to do tomorrow also according unto this day's decree. And let Haman's ten sons be hanged upon the gallows. All right, so that's the reward of our enemies, man. Death and destruction, man. Which they never bring out in those harlot houses you call churches, man. And this judgment will come back on earth, man. It tells you Yahweh Shai, who is ignorantly called Jesus Christ, is coming back to uh, rule the nations with a rod of iron. But anyway. For the Jews that were in Shushan gathered themselves together on the 14th day, also of the month of Adar, and slew 300 men at Shushan, but on the prey they laid not their hand. But the other Jews that were in the king's provinces gathered themselves together and stood for their lives and had rest from their enemies and slew of their foes seventy and five thousand. But they laid not their hands on the prey. So right there on the 14th day, guess what? Seventy five thousand men were, were destroyed, man. Were rooted out of the land of the living. All right. Reading on. On the 13th day of the month of Adar, and on the 14th day of the same rest of the day, and made it a day of feasting and gladness, man. All right, it's a day of turning up, man. Feasting and gladness, man. Drink wine and be merry. All right. But the Jews that were at Shushan assembled together on the 13th day thereof, and on the 14th thereof, and on the 15th day of the same, they rested. And made it a day of feasting and gladness. Therefore, the Jews of the villages that dwelt in the unwalled towns made the 14th day of the month of Adar a day of gladness and feasting and a good day and of sending portions one to another, man. It, which means what? You know, it's a day of us of us congregating, communicating, uh, you know, relaxing, having a good time, man. Which is a holy day. See, the term holiday comes from the word holy. But these holidays are wicked and evil, man. Because the word holy means separate. Meaning not to be like all these other nations. Not to be like damn Christmas, Easter, and Thanksgiving, man. This is a, this is a holy day in the Bible, man. And Mordecai wrote these things and sent letters unto all the Jews that were in all the provinces of the king Ahasuerus, both nigh and far, to establish this among them that they should keep the 14th day of the month Adar and the 15th day of the same yearly. And that's what we're doing right now. We're keeping the day right now. And we're, I'm going to, you know, Lord willing, I'm going to keep it again the next year if we're here next year. But but thankfully, hopefully, we'll be doing that in the kingdom, man. You know? And I'm not trying to be here next year, man. Read on. Where's we at? As the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies... In the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into a good day, that they should make them days of feasting and joy and of sending portions one to another and gifts to the poor. All right. So feasting and joy, sending portions one to another and gifting the poor. man. And the Jews undertook to do as they had begun and as Mordecai had written unto them because Haman, see, like I said, he was an Agagite. An Amalek, all right, a grandson of Esau, an Edomite, a so-called white man. All right, where we at? Because Ammon, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had devised against the Jews to, be, to destroy them, and had cast pur, that it is the lot to consume them and to destroy them. That's right. He wanted to destroy us. He wanted to wipe us off the face of the earth. Which is just like how they want to do now. But when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letters that his wicked device, which he devised against the Jews, should return upon his own head, and that he and his sons should be hanged on the gallows. You see that? And that's the fate of, of, of Haman, man, and his ten sons, man. 
all right, which they don't speak about in those harlot houses, man. It's them damn churches, man, with the wooden cross idol, all right? Come out of there, lest you be destroyed, man. Because you ain't learning the truth in there. Anyway, verse 26, Wherefore they call these days Purim, after the name of Pur. Therefore, for all the words of this letter, and of that which they had seen concerning this matter, and which had come unto them, the Jews ordained and took upon them, and upon their seed, and upon all such as joined themselves unto them, so as it should not fall, that they would keep these two days, according to their writing, and according to their appointed time, every year, man. Which is what we're doing right now through the Spirit. Man. Um, and that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city. And that these days of Purim should not fall from among the Jews, nor the mem memorial of them perish from their seed. All right, we're the seed. We're the, we're, we're who we're speaking of. Then Esther, the queen, the daughter of of Bielel and Mordecai the Jew wrote with all authority to confirm this second letter of Purim. So she stamped that. The Queen Esther stamped that, man. Stamped the day Purim. And he sent the letters unto all the Jews to the 127 provinces of the kingdom of Assyrus with words of peace and truth. That's right. You can look up the Persian kingdoms, man. They had 127 provinces, which is ridiculous, man. They had a huge kingdom. And this letter was sent to all the, all of our people, all right, all of the southern kingdom. Because at the time, that's where you get the word Jew from. You get the word Jew from the word Judah, which is the southern kingdom, all right. And this is what this letter was sent out to the 127 provinces, right? To confirm these days of Purim in their times appointed according to Mordecai, the Jew, and Esther, the queen, had, an, had enjoyed them. And join them, and as the as, as they had decreed for themselves and for their seed, the matters of the fastings and their cry, and the decree of Esther confirmed these matters of Purim, and it was written in the book, the book that I'm holding right now. All right, this book, man. And with that, that's the edition of, of uh, Purim. Hopefully, brothers, uh, drink to be merry, feast to be merry. All right, and with that, once again, I want to say peace to the twelve. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High Yahweh in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, man. All right? And I want to say shalom to you, brothers. That's pushing this word in the truth and sincerity. Shalom to you, sisters. That's humbling down and being submissive to your husbands, to your heads. And shalom to you people coming in and learning, man. All right? Peace to the twelve. I'm gone.